cloud and AI in our academic ecosystem team. So it's Charlotte Yoconi's team, which is part of developer relations. Um, I run academic ecosystem for the world, <laughs> it's an easy way of explaining it, which is basically 68 universities around the world where we have depth relationships from an engineering perspective. And Imperial College is one of those uh, institutions where we have a relationship and we run a set of industrialized projects across these institutions, which are basically uh, the students capstone projects, where we work with various teams across Microsoft in building out a, a project. The projects last between six and 12 weeks of a group of students. Um, and ideally, it's a proof of concept at the end of that time, which we can present, then present back to engineering teams such as yourself around what those students have achieved. So. I'd like to say thanks to Stacey for, for helping support this project and we've been running this project with Imperial for about eight weeks. That's great. So uh, Raj, are you the one who's going to give an overview from the student's perspective or how do you want to run the presentation? Yeah, so we were just thinking of starting the presentation. We, all of us would go around, introduce ourselves very briefly, and then we would um, kick off with the presentation, yeah. That sounds great. Why don't you go ahead and take it away then? Yep, I'm just sharing the deck. Is that okay? Yeah. Uh, is this still a uh, screen still sharing? Because I can't see it. For... No, we see. We just got that. your video. Yeah. There we there go. We okay. Now. Yep. Okay. Hi, everyone. So thank you all for taking the time today to attend our group project presentation. We're all very excited to be presenting to you today. I'm Raj. Hi, everyone. I'm Lulu. Hi, I'm Jinwei. Hi, I'm Ata. Uh, my name is Ji, but everyone calls me Alba. We're all third year students at Imperial College London, currently majoring in electrical and electronic engineering. For the past few weeks, we've been working as an extension to the FarmBeat engineering team. We've had weekly stand-ups and been working in a dedicated Teams channel with the product team. This has allowed us to ask questions and gain feedback, insight, and present our progress. What is FarmBeats? It is a venture of Microsoft Research currently in its public preview. Launched in 2015, it aims to democratize artificial intelligence and Internet of Things technologies to farmers globally. These technologies usually comprise low-cost sensors, drones, vision, white space, and machine learning algorithms. Together, these can be used to tackle very little or no power and internet in farms, which are some common problems faced in rural areas. Now, why digital agriculture? This can automate existing processes to provide better insight to farmers, along with giving them a real-time view or a real-time pulse of the farm. Consequently, these technologies can significantly improve productivity and reduce costs to a large extent. These factors are vital to meeting the 21st century food supply challenges. To promote the concept of farm beats among universities, Microsoft has collaborated with educational institutions and universities around the world. This involves teaching IoT concepts with Azure Cloud services to students. Hence, the farm beat student kit includes a Raspberry Pi as a microcontroller with pre-configured Microsoft Azure Cloud services with the following sensors. Temperature, humidity, and pressure sensor, light sensor, and the soil moisture sensor. So yes, uh, to, to give an overview of our project, um, our aim is to teach undergraduate students just as ourselves about IoT and digital agriculture. For this, we've created a set of learning resources using the Farm Meets Kit and the Azure Cloud Computing Services. We designed these resources following certain specifications. For easy integration with Microsoft Learn in the future, we hosted our instructions on GitHub, arranged as markdown files. As mentioned, we catered these resources particularly towards undergraduate students who are interested in IoT or digital agriculture. We've defined certain learning objectives for design labs and provided knowledge checks along the way to solidify students' learning. 
And also we provided instruction, instructions for DIY kits as well as official farm beats kit so that the students could use their own Raspberry Pis and sensors to follow our resources even if they don't access to the official kits. We've designed these learning modules in such a way that they start off simple and get more sophisticated along the way so that the students can build up on the things they learn as they progress through the labs. In each of the labs, students experiment on familiar agriculture scenarios and utilize several Azure Cloud computing services. We also provide extension project suggestions so that the students can apply the things they learn in the labs themselves and hopefully build even more sophisticated projects. So we're delivering a set of learning resources which comprises of a GitHub repository containing user guides and step-by-step -step tutorials for the following modules. Monitor your plans. Your students will learn how to set up their Raspberry Pi with their sensors and learn how to obtain and view real-time data from the sensors using IoT Hub or a mobile application developed in Power Apps. Water your plant, a more advanced lab where the students will learn how to start processing data and learn how to build products such as automatic irrigation system. Predict the weather. In this lab, students will learn how to use Azure machine learning. This will help them build a model that will help them predict the probability of rain. LED grow light system. Finally, in this scenario, the light sensor will be used to create an LED grow light system that optimizes the plant growth. So why these modules? These modules have strong links to state-of-the-art digital agriculture techniques. Students will learn and apply the typical precision farming methods at universities. These modules focus on issues of contemporary global significance. For instance, the second scenario helps students understand and appreciate the problem of water scarcity. It guides them to design an automatic irrigation system to efficiently irrigate their plants such that they can conserve water. Finally, these modules show how the student kit with just a few sensors intertwined with cloud computing services can be used to design and build complex IoT products. So let's dive into one of the labs and take a more in-depth look at the technical details of the design. So as the title suggests, this lab is all about using the Farm Beats kit to water a plant. So it takes students through the steps of setting up a notification system to alert a user to when the plant needs to be watered, and then from there setting up a simple automatic irrigation system. So at this point, students will have already learned how to set up a sensor device to collect and upload data and create a dashboard to view the data online. And this is done using Azure IoT Centro. Students will have already created their own applications for the Farm Beats Kit and built a real-time data pipeline using Events Hub and Stream Analytics to stream their sensor data to cloud storage. So the main purpose of this lab is to demonstrate how we can add on to this existing framework and actually start doing some basic processing with the sensor data. So students are introduced to the process of deploying an Azure function application, which checks whether the soil moisture is above or below a certain threshold and commutes that, communicates that back to IoT Central via an API request and toggles an LED light. So this lab also shows you how you can make some simple modifications to this general setup. So for example, you can turn on a water pump when the plant needs to be watered or integrate Azure Maps weather prediction to take the expected rainfall into account when making a decision on whether or not to water the plant. In conclusion, we all really enjoyed working on this project and we've taken up the challenge of creating resources to complement the Farm Beats kit and managed to fulfill all the requirements set for the project. So we designed uh, labs based on the following practical scenarios, monitor your plant, water your plant, predict the weather, and build your own LED grow light system. With the aim of helping students get started with these kits, learn more both about IoT and digital agriculture, and even inspire them to start their own projects. So I have a GitHub repo that's going to be made available so you can follow this link and find out more about their project. So this concludes our presentation. I'll hand things over to Alba and she can take you through the GitHub repo. So we're currently working with Stacy to have everything available in a Microsoft repository. Can you all see my screen? Yes, we can see it. Okay, so this is how the current repo looks like. So we have two folders, one for the aware kits and one for the DIY kits. So the content of these two folders is pretty much the same, but the main difference is uh, when running the Python scripts, uh, we, we know that the aware kits runs on Windows IoT core, so it would use the Windows commands, whereas the DIY kits, we set it to run on Raspbian OS, 
So it will use the Linux commands. Inside the folder, you can see that we have first the uh, Share Farm Bits integration, which, which is just uh, a tutorial that goes through how to make the connection to the uh, Azure Farm Bits. And here so you can see that. Question. So, Jeet, the rest of the pipeline is the same. It's just that instead of IoT Core, you're using uh, the, a different OS, but the rest of the cloud pipeline is the same, or is it yeah, different? Cause yeah, because in the beginning we just planned to have a set of resources, but we uh, noted that the OS are different. So we think if we put everything into a folder, it would it may be confusing. Like if, uh, for instance, if I'm using the Ras uh, the, the Raspbian OS, I may have to skip some steps. So we think it's clearer to have different folders, one for each kit. Okay, great, thanks. So in this case, we're assuming that they don't have any for uh, any prior knowledge. So the first step is just go through how to set up Python on your own computer in both Linux and Mac uh, and Windows. Sorry. So yeah, this is just a very basic step to make sure that we're all on the same page. And then this just goes through creating the metadata, sending data. And I also find it interesting to add an additional file that it's it is not on the uh, official documentation of Azure Farm Bits, which is uh, sending the data directly from IoT Central to Azure Farm Bits using stream analytics. analytics. So in order to the, uh, for the data to be displayed in the Azure Farm Bits uh, accelerator, it has to be in a very specific format. So this tutorial just goes through how to set stream analytics to do that. And here you can see um, how the function should look like. And there are also some comments about what, what is it doing. So then we can just go to the first lab. Well, uh, we, we also have a, a lab zero, which is just uh, how to install Windows IoT Core and Raspbian in the other case, and how to set up all the hardware, like put the hardware together. So it's pretty straightforward. Then we have lab one. Uh, at the beginning, we only we were only using IoT Central, but IoT Central is just a web application. So we found it interesting for students to actually build an own mobile application or tablet application. So we've chosen Power Apps to do that. And if you go, this is also step by step. This is how the interface should look like. And here you also have like a diagram about how everything would work together. So if, for example, I go to the Power Apps, how to create the Power Apps, you can see that it goes step by step from creating your connector to creating the actual interface, which is right below. And also all the code used is explained in words. Oh, let me. So, so here uh, is just explaining the code. And how to use switch statements, collections and every all of that. Then we also have a uh, lab two. This has been divided into three different steps. So the first one is to set up an alarm system. This is basically sending an email with a Python script or even easier to create a rule in IoT Central to send the email whenever it's needed. Then it's the automatic irrigation, which will use a water pump to irrigate it automatically, water automatically at the plant. And then to be more specific, like more, yeah, more specific, we also decided to integrate Azure Maps to make sure that the to take into account rainfall before watering the plant. In Lab Three, they will be using uh, Machine Learning Studio. Machine Learning Studio. Uh, now, right now, we just have the classic Machine Learning Studio, but we are also working on the instructions for the preview version, so that students can get to choose which version do they want to do. So you can just go, OK, this is wrong. Yeah, so you can just DIY kids. Yeah. Oh, OK, never mind. Um, this just goes through the whole tutorial. And then at the end, you can just go to some knowledge checks. OK. Wait. Some knowledge check. Uh, we're planning to have these knowledge checks in all of the scenarios, but currently we just have it for uh, lab three. And then finally, it's just uh, 
controlling an LED light system. This is okay. We still need to uh, clean up this, but this is basically uh, very simple. It's just uh, creating the a new I IoT central template for the device, and then writing the Python code. Because in this case, we're using threads to control the actual LEDs, and then at the end, you can you also have some optional steps. Uh, in this case, would be for instance to integrate Azure functions. So students will have learned in lab two how to do this. So we believe they can just try to do this by themselves without a step-by-step -step tutorial. I also want to mention that uh, for the DIY kids, we know that all not all the students have their own Raspberry Pi. So we also provide some Python scripts with simulated data, just in case they want to learn about IoT and and Azure services, but they don't have a Raspberry Pi. So if I go into here, we can just say that it is just ra some random data and the rest is pretty much the same. In addition, we also know that getting started with all the Azure services may be confusing because there are a lot. So we created this kind of cheat sheet, which gives like a brief introduction of what each, each service is doing so that the student can get back to it anytime they need it. And that's pretty much for the GitHub repo. Yeah, this is very cool. Yeah, pretty, very yeah. nice, very nice. Uh, so I have a question. Have you guys, I mean, the, the similar simulation uh, piece that you have, have you guys th thought of sort of creating a digital twin simulator where, you know, the sensors are, there in uh, IoT Central, and then you just use them to hook it up the whole scenario. So, the thing is, for for example, in the first lab, we're just making the connection to IoT Central. Like to, uh, this is basically uh, sending data from your Raspberry Pi to the IoT Central to then display instead of using just a simulated device that we can do easily in IoT Central. So that's why I just created like some random data. So that they can learn how to make a connection from an actual Raspberry Pi to IoT Central and also to other services. No, no. So I was talking in, in terms in, in addition to you know the the kit. If you don't have the kit and you you want to just create the whole thing using digital twin as the way you are pushing data from the cloud as simulated devices. Yeah, so Riaz, that wasn't that wasn't part of the brief, but yeah, you could definitely do that. You know, the the key thing um, around this project, it was it was super short because of COVID, number one. So everything was brought forward a few weeks, and then it was put back due to due to the COVID issues. But again, you know, having a brief such as that to use digital twinning and simulators, you know, is is a really good idea for a for a future project. You know, the, the way we aligned this project was really around, number one, creating awareness of what Farm Beats was. So the team had to produce like some flyers and presentations to, to share with other students and academics what the, what the Farm Beats service was. Then look at some scenario based labs that could be used as either a blended learning approach using the principles of Microsoft Learn. So, you know, that's why everything is like in markdown format with some form of knowledge checks. And then to have that step-by-step -step approach, so it could be given as a tutorial or a lab within either teaching or within self-paced research. So that was the initial brief we gave. Um, okay, okay, got it. Yeah. Uh, no, I mean this was just a thought which came as they presented. I mean I love this. This is very good. Uh, but this is like an additional way of how. You yeah, do. definitely. Yeah. Does anyone else have any questions for the team or comments? All right, well, like I said, I've uh, recorded the meeting and make sure to make it available to everyone on Ranveer's team and any other folks uh, that want to view. Um, and just to appreciate all the work the students have done, it's going to be really helpful for what we're trying to do here with our university community, just making it easier for students to learn about Azure and learn about 
digital agriculture. So I just really appreciate all the detail you've put in, especially for me as a beginner in a lot of this technology, having those basic steps is crucial because and when I was initially trying to learn about the product and Farm Beats, you spend a lot of time just trying to understand all these uh, basic framework pieces. So having that right there in one place for students is just invaluable. And I thank you very much. Um, I also wanted to add that uh, as part of our project, we created a leaflet. Uh, so that's just for universities or students who are interested in using the Farm Beats kit or the resources. And I can share it with you guys on the like chat if you go, if you were interested in looking at it absolutely yeah so again you know we, we have videos of, of what the team's produced powerpoint decks etc um you know in terms of like the engineering mythology we've been having weekly stand-up meetings looking at how the students work and how they're performing you know we've had teams chats both physical and virtual but you know the key thing from my perspective is this is like you know the first project with the farm beach team and i see lots of opportunities working with institutions around the world to, to potentially scale this out and create a bigger university community and, and you know well done to the imperial guys and girls for doing this because you know it's an amazing project you did really well and again you know this was done in such a short time period so they've literally just got this week to do all the write-ups and the repos and I've been working on with Stacey to get this as a Microsoft University's Farm Beats community GitHub repo, where hopefully more institutions will put those um, scenario based learning examples of how to use Farm Beat. Yeah, this is a wonderful piece of work. Thank you, everyone. Um, thank you, students, for doing this. Uh, uh, Raj, uh, Atta, and Lulu, as well as G. And uh, yeah, uh, it's it's amazing work. And Lee and Stacy, thanks for driving it. Look forward to taking it to the next level and driving more impact with universities worldwide. And good luck as you all go to your uh, next semester next year after your summer break. Stay in touch. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. All right. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.